Welcome, Nottingham, to our Board of Selectmen meeting, February 28, 2022. Let's start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, invisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, before we go into uh, business, I'd like to uh, take a moment and recognize uh, Bonnie McKinnon for her years of service as a uh, town moderator, uh, 11 years to be exact, and March 8th will be her last uh, town election that she'll be uh, doing as a town mon moderator. So. Uh, you know, thank you, Bonnie, on behalf of the Board of Selectmen and on behalf of the Town of Nottingham. We, th we thank you for your years of service and dedication, and we wish you well. Can I say one thing? Uh, also, the Planning Board is losing Dirk Rotenheis, who's been the chair for nine years or longer oh, wow. on the Planning Board. He is no longer uh, uh, signing up for another term. So he would value miss. He was a great uh, leader for the Planning Board over the past couple of years. Um, so, Dirk, thank you for what you did. And uh, if you ever want to come back, please do. <laughs> Great. Okay. Has everybody had an opportunity to look at the manifests? Any, any questions, comments? Anybody like to make a motion? Make a motion to approve the accounts payable manifest of February 21st, 2022, and the payroll manifest of February 22nd, 2022. Okay, we have a motion. Second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Unanimous. Approved minutes from February 7th and the 17th. Does everybody have an opportunity to look those over? Questions, comments? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as written for uh, February 7th and February 17th. Second. Motion is second. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Sign boards and committees. Budgets didn't meet. Planning board. Uh, well, one thing too, the planning board did have, we went over uh, some subdivisions. Um, a lot of conceptual reviews. One that was going to be off Smoke Street, uh, Smoke Street uh, which could be a potential 20 house subdivision or so. Uh, then we had, which is a, again, conceptual reviews. We were going over plans on how what they might do. Uh, then we also had the meeting um, who came in uh, for the Route 4 property. And again, what he's planning on might be doing for another conceptual review for projects and buildings that were going up over there. Uh, so it was a pretty long and intense meeting. We left, it's almost 10 o'clock, so. But a lot of stuff going on. It's not quieting down. Okay. CIP didn't meet today. You guys no, no, until next season. Three hundredth. Did we get the CIP report, or is it just in there? It's it's it is in the book. Oh, okay. I did mail out the final at one point. I never saw it. I, didn't it. I can send it again. Okay. Sorry, Tyler. Go ahead. Do you know how many people showed up for that? I'm not sure. Oh, cool. Nice. Nice. Excellent. Pull that over to you. Okay. Uh, any updates on Marston, Donna? No. Town administrative report. Just a couple things. Uh, town report. In as of 2.30 this afternoon, it will start to appear around town. Uh, it's, we got started today on distribution, but it will be at the library and the school and liars and all well, the usual places. Uh, town on one side, school on the other. It's one book for both, as usual. Uh, thanks to uh, Kelly Dallaire for spearheading that. Uh, I don't know. It's done. 
There you go. Um, this is your last meeting before the election. A um, couple things from the moderator. One, uh, she'd like to know when you're all going to be there. You typically pick a schedule of yourselves to have a quorum of yourselves there. Uh, if you want to do that tonight or if you want to do it electronically, it doesn't matter. She'd love the information now, but it's up to you. Uh, if you want to start with something like that, you can, or you can just talk it through. I, I, I think it probably, if, ever, if the board's okay with it, just send it to her electronically. Yeah, that's fine. I gotta look at my calendar okay. anyway. So can we you'll let her know when you'll be there? Yep. I have the whole day off, so whatever I have to do to tell her, okay. so let me know. Cool. Um, she uh, told us this morning that voting will be mask optional. Uh, we'll be uh, emphasizing distancing, but uh, one, one flow of voters generally no separate locations separate processes or whatever for masked and unmasked people so uh, that settles that and um, the ballot machine testing uh, they run through a, a set of tests on the ballot machine uh, once the programming card comes in uh, that programming card was late so they've had to delay the testing until Wednesday that was originally posted for tomorrow so uh, ballot machine testing will be on Wednesday instead of Tuesday and that's all posted in the usual places but um, other than that I think we're ready for election we'll have uh, set up the afternoon before uh, which is pretty easy uh, and then just a long day for everybody on Tuesday um, unless you all have questions or concerns or facility worries or anything uh, can't learn anything from the weather yet but uh, you know if it's too late for people to get absentee ballots it is not uh, they can uh, walk into the town clerk's office whenever they're open and fill out a form uh, it's getting late to do that by mail yep. to get it to get your application in, yeah. get it back to you and then get it for you to get it back to the town clerk it's yeah. okay. you, you might be out of time there uh, but okay. in person absentee is still uh, viable right up until the day before um, they have to be back in by election day at some time of day I want to say five o'clock but I'm okay. mistaken and I think that's all I've got for you for now uh, action item reviews from last meeting a recycling center fees and a, and a conservation commission letter which I'm assuming are the two things we have on our business what was the conservation letter this for the well that's the hearing uh, uh, uh. also been communicating with them about road salt that might be it too that was one that was what I brought up that was mentioned uh, to that me. may be what you brought up at the last meeting For reduced road salt over our watershed areas. Yeah, I've, I've been going back and forth Aquifer with District, uh, sorry. Susan Mooney about how to <clears throat> how to ask you for something, how to present something to you that is a little more specific than yep. hey, uh, do this. So uh, just lo uh, looking at what other towns do, what, let us see where we are with the state, uh, that kind of thing. So I think you've seen that letter already, but there's been uh, you haven't had been asked to do anything specifically yet. Okay, assessing. We got a lot here. We'll break it up in the chunks here. Well, actually, we got quite a few that are the same. Everybody had a chance to review them? Yep. Any questions, comments? Some money going into the conservation department. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, if there isn't, did somebody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. The select board approve. The veterans credits for map seven lot two N dash seven and map twenty four lot one forty dash three. Second. Are you gonna do them all? Hmm? You're gonna do the other ones? Separate. 
all separate. All right. That was uh, lot 24, 140-3? Yeah, the two veterans' credits. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Unanimous. Yeah, I'll make a motion on the select board to approve the land use change tax um, for map 6, lot 22-1, map 24, lot 141-2D. Map 40, lot 1-1, map 40, lot 1-4, map 40, lot 1-6, map 6, lot 22-2, map 40, lot 1-2, and map 40, lot 1-5. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. General business. Special licenses and applications, watercrafts. Any uh, thoughts on this? Looks like they uh, did everything they needed. Yeah, I mean, I. I don't know what there really is for us to do on it. There's really, I mean, what, what is the expectation of action on our part at this point? Um, did they get everything cleared though? I mean, cause we had that, the guy was re-going against the zoning boards mm -hmm. the second time around. Yep. Uh, so this has, 2019 you first saw this and you uh well let's even back up before that the law gives you the board the right to license uh competitive events like this um there's you know you can license roller skating and rope tosses and this a collection of weird things and also competitions and this is a competition for fees and money so uh that's where your authority comes in you uh when this appeared in 2019 really didn't have a framework to think about it because nobody had proposed anything like this but nobody had, or they'd just done it without asking uh so you at that time approved a special event license policy and process uh that policy is really laid out to make sure uh that we're checking all of the kind of safety health and welfare aspects of these um more than and that's what the board and your staff are generally looking at is those kinds of things um in 2019 you you said to us don't enforce anything let them go forward with it as long as they get planning board approval for the, the this use of the land for any future events which would have been 2020 one 2021 Sorry, move everything forward a year. Started in 2020. Yeah. Uh, they spent 2021 before the planning board and the zoning board getting approvals for things, essentially. It took a very long time to get through those processes. Um, uh, planning board is done with the site plan approval and approved it. The zoning board approved the variance to allow the use, but that zoning board decision has been appealed to Superior Court. Uh, so the approvals are all in place. Um, unless the court tells us otherwise, we proceed with the approvals as they stand. Uh, the zoning board's uh, decision uh, will be the subject of a court hearing next week, and we will get a decision from the court on whether they uphold the ZBA in time for this event or not. Um, uh, ZBA cases at Superior Court move to the front of the line, and they get dealt with relatively quickly. So. Um, we expect that we'll hear from the court on the ZBA case well before the first event here. So what I suggested is that you uh, approve it pending that all coming out in the, in the town's favor. This is the town that's been sued in this case. Yep. Um, the applicant here is a uh, authorized uh, party to the case. They will be uh, submitting stuff to the court. Um, and so that's where this all sits um, the approvals are all in place the site plan approval process for the planning board 
covered the vast majority of things that you heard from the staff when you first heard about this. The fire chiefs, the health officer, the police chief, you know, all weighed into the conditions and the site plan process, and that stuff is very well detailed in the in the site plan. So uh, all the health and safety people are fine with this application as it is, with a couple of things that I noted. One's the ZBA. Um, they haven't provided proof of insurance yet, and we have to work out details on uh, uh, police detail coverage, which they had no trouble with last time. Yep. Um, just too early to schedule such things. So that is how you get to where you are here. Uh, and you're generally speaking, your 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 purview is is public health and safety. You can define that how you how you want. How, you know, safety, health, and welfare. Um, you can you can interpret that how you wish. So you you've got plenty of latitude with this. But the, I mean, the ZBA they, they granted the variance there, whatever it's variance. So who who is this bringing the against the ZBA? Uh, a butters. Okay. It's a it's Ooh. a collection of a butters and people. Uh, I, I guess I would say within earshot. Um, it's a it's a group of individuals, including Director Butters. It was a, it was a process. A complaint against the process, the, the ZBA. Uh, no, I think the the I haven't read the I haven't read the complaint against the ZBA in a while, but um, it is on the substance. It is on did the ZBA consider enough things? That, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what the court will do? The court will essentially do one of three things. They will let the ZBA's decision stand. They will throw it out outright as being you know, and, and and implement some other decision. Uh, in place of the zoning board uh, or remand it back to the ZBA and say hear this again and consider X Y and Z that you didn't consider the first time so those are those are generally what the court will do um, the in terms of likelihood of, of occurrence it's much more likely that the court would remand and give it back to the ZBA if the court felt that the process was flawed or there was some other something missing the court doesn't want to step in the way of the ZB unless it has to so um, we'll we'll hear that I bet in April that, that answer okay. so we're seeking approval of this tonight unless the courts decide differently that's what I would say yes if you're comfortable with the concept and with the, the plan uh, if you were to approve the license then the applicant could then move forward with their planning they're now about three months ahead of their first date, right? Their first one's in May. Yeah. So it's probably, I haven't spoken to them in a while, but it's probably getting to the point where they need to start making commitments and advertising and doing what they gotta do to have a successful event uh, at 90 days out. Uh, they need an answer from you and, and they're, they're waiting on the court just like we are. But um, if you're comfortable making a decision, go right ahead. If you need more information, we do have time to do that and we can get the applicant in uh, if you want. So tell me if you think this is right, Chris. I, I think the way if I were to make a, a motion that we approve it is that the wording would be something like, you know, approval conditional based on the denial of the Superior Court appeal of the ZBA decision, denial of the appeal um, pending the outcome of it, plus delivery of proof of insurance and um, uh, plan for police detail coverage. So what I'm saying is, I want to tie both of those in, mm -hmm. in addition to mm -hmm. the to the case. Even though they don't, I mean, they have to provide it 14 days before we get a week out, and they don't have it. I want us to be able to have that coverage there. Mm -hmm. I'm good with that. Yeah, that works. So you gonna make the motion? Yeah. No. What did I say? <laughs> <laughs> So I will make a motion that we approve the uh, special event license application relative to the watercross events pending the outcome of the uh, Supreme, uh, the appeal to the Supreme Court on the ZBA decision, um, which would be, uh, I'm gonna have to word this better for you. Uh, Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve the application for the special event water cross event pending a superior court denial of the appeal of the ZBA decision as well as delivery of uh, 
proof of insurance at least 14 days prior to the event and a detailed uh, police de detailed coverage plan to the satisfaction of the chief 14 days prior to the event. Second. Are you intending that to be all three events that they've asked for or just the first one? Uh, well, I, would, I was assuming that they would use the same plan for all three events. They will. Yeah. So I was applying it to all three. Okay. Just making sure. Yeah. So we have a motion. Tyler, you second it? Yep. Okay. All in favor? One thing before we actually do that. On their event license here, it says applica application, uh, applicant agrees at its sole expense to defend uh, and hold harmless the town of Conway. Oh, that's a, no, that's our application. That's that's us stealing an application from them. And okay, I just have but to fix ours that. Ours will no. say not yeah. him and not yeah, the, Conway. The actual license will say yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> just to, I didn't know if we were. No, that's our that's our application. Oh, somebody uh, else, John. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to. Fix, well, I don't know. I mean, no, I, I saw that recently too and said, "Oops." Oh, okay. Who cares, John? <laughs> yeah, yeah so, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, yeah, we, we we stole this whole thing from the town of Conway. Okay. So, we, were you in favor? Yeah. Yes, I'm fine. Right, so it's I'm unanimous. Fine. Okay. Yes. Lorraine, sorry. All right. Recycling center fees and policies. I think we can probably do this in less yeah. than ten minutes. Um, uh, so I have finished the tabulation of the year-end numbers. Those are the charts that you have. Um, I'll just walk you through those real quick and pull out a couple of highlights. Um, the first page is just total volume by weight. Uh, weight our, our volume continues to go up. It was uh, uh, somewhere between 45 and 5 percent last year in total volume. Uh, very consistent growth there, uh, which is outpacing the population growth by a little bit. So, so it's an uh, increased volume for expense materials whereas revenue materials have stayed relatively flat. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah what, what we call revenue materials or anything that we get some revenue doesn't mean that it's profitable for us, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. like, uh, as yeah. you'll see later, paper is a revenue item, but it actually costs us a fortune to recycle it. So it's a revenue item, but in really in name only. Yeah. Um, uh, no, not, nothing really surprising jumping out of the numbers. If you go to the next page, you'll see a breakdown by the type of materials. Um, we saw an increase in MSW to municipal solid waste uh, that we had attributed to uh, the pandemic two years ago. We said, well, people are at home more, they're doing more at home, they're generating more trash. Uh, we figured that's probably what was causing that and that uh, that elevated level and the trend continued you know we're up again from that uh, at about the same clip we've been increasing um, the the most significant increases continue to be in uh, construction and demolition debris and bulky waste um, that's uh, expensive to get rid of and it's also where we do the bulk of our business uh, outside of MSW um, that trend continues the pace I guess slowed just a little bit from the year before, but uh, that's our fastest growing uh, material. Everything else is pretty constant. Um, Tell me again uh, what we define as MSW. That's everything that goes in the compactor. Okay. And nothing else. Okay. Yep. Um, that goes to the turnkey landfill in Rochester. Everything else goes other places. Okay. Um, the uh, the chart below that is cost per ton. Uh, so you'll see, or the total, that's total cost, not total cost per ton. That's what we're spending. Uh, you see big increase again in, um, in uh, C&D and bulky waste. That's a combination of increased volume and increased trucking costs. Trucking is what's really driving this in many cases. Uh, the cost to dispose has gone up a little bit, but the cost to move it from Nottingham to wherever it goes has gone up markedly. That's where that's the, that's the biggest driver. That's the same story as last year. Um, fuel costs doing what they're doing this year. I bet that's going to happen again. Um, that's really what's what's driving this for us. Um, Chris, do you uh, do you put this out to bid for other companies to see if they, they they're more competitive in pricing? At least for the trucking aspect of the it. The trucking aspect is tough because you've got to, you got to, you got to, either, either we have to buy the 
roll off dumpsters or we get them from the trucking companies and we only have a couple options in that arena so we did kind of feel out the market about a year and a half ago on that uh, and decided to stay where we were okay. um, do you think it might be feasible to look again especially with the cost of fuel and all that right yeah well we will we will test that uh, periodically okay um, it's there's just not a lot of options when uh, unless we were to go out and invest in a whole lot of uh, dumpsters which is which really changes the uh, you, know, you, ha you need to have more than what you see when you go there because you while you're shipping them you have to have them in place sometimes and uh, so it's a it's a sizable investment to do okay. that um, maybe in the in the context of doing something globally different there that might make sense but um, probably on its own last time we looked at it we felt like it, it wouldn't make and we, we've even kicked around the idea of well, why don't we just truck it ourselves, you know, like, but we don't have the right kind of truck. So, right. um, you know, then you start talking about, oh, well, how do you, do you pair up with another town? And the scheduling of that gets tricky because we're all, we're all going to the dump on Saturday, yeah. and, right? So um, we're, we're poking around trying to find ways to do this differently, but we haven't, we haven't found much. Okay. Um, uh, just one more thing to call it, maybe the third page. I just wanted to bring to your attention. Um, the this is a per ton cost of different materials and I just wanted to show you the green line the green line is paper um, so the the we get a little bit of when we when we deliver paper to be recycled we, we get a little bit of money for it but we have to ship it to Massachusetts or Nashua um, to get it to be processed and that cost has gone through the roof so we're now paying on a per ton basis about two and a half times more to recycle the paper than we would if we just threw it in the compactor. Um, so recycling is, is costing us extra in, the, in that case. Not because of, uh, trucking is really what's, what's driving that because um, we, we have to bring it so far. Um, I'm not suggesting we not recycle paper, it's a, you know. It's a, but recycling uh, in general has never been a Get rich scheme or, or no. making money scheme is good. no there's there the 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 best value is in not putting it in the landfill and paying you know x number of dollars a ton to do that usually you can look at all those recyclable materials and you look at this graph and you say all the lines are below the red line for msw that means it's cheaper to recycle than it is to throw it in the in the in the compact it's just right now paper isn't that isn't the case um uh one one quirky operational thing that that we run into we're starting to run into more often is for for a very long time uh the msw compactor uh has about been filled up once a week that about you know like wednesday morning waste management comes and swaps out the dumpster for the compactor and away we and empties it and it's it's it, it hovers around full uh the last couple of years more and more we are uh, exceeding the capacity of that in a, in a week uh, so we're right at the at the tipping point on that uh, you you may have noticed an overflow dumpster there at times that's there for uh, oh god the compactor's full and it's 11 o'clock on Saturday morning like what do we how do we get through to the next delivery we're we've been hovering around that tipping point more often and it's gonna it's gonna mess us up somehow sometime soon we don't know how to fix that yet except for that overflow thing so it's it's going to keep costing us a little bit more than it would otherwise because we're hovering around that tipping point um, and that's the largest compactor we can get yeah I, well we could get another one you know it's not not unheard of to have two but we're nowhere near that vo need and volume we need 1.1 right now that's gotcha. so, okay. uh, yeah that I, I only tell you that story because you're going to hear it again somehow and there's going to be some kind of need to solve that somehow yeah. probably with money uh we don't know what that is yet but you're gonna, you're going to hear that story again um unless we find a way to you know dramatically reduce the the overall flow which would take a big change in, in some way so uh that is the quick and dirty recap on uh 2021 um, a couple of weeks ago, we uh, brought uh, some fee schedule changes to you. This is the finalized 
proposal. All the numbers are the same. Um, we had uh, we had a messy tire uh, menu that we just kind of pulled off of here and said, "See the staff, and and we'll customize it to the specialized tires." But um, you, what you're seeing here is, uh, as we talked about a few weeks ago, small increases in mostly the bulky waste and C and D stuff, where that volume and cost increases are coming from. Um, uh, small increases there in an effort to offset that cost. So um, if you have further questions about that, we can do that, or you can approve this revised fee schedule if you're comfortable with it. Um, just refresh my memory is uh, those mer those old mercury bulbs are those con those are considered hazardous and they won't we don't take those right or do we mercury bulbs CFLs right yes no those are hazardous okay. yeah we take fluorescents complex fluorescents so two fluorescents okay. yeah okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna double check that but I'm I'm pretty sure that's the case. And tires are under cover now. Um, most, maybe not all. Okay. We have that much. It, uh, it's a frequency of pickup. Oh, gotcha. Kind okay. Of thing. Uh, late in the cycle, I would be surprised. If okay. Anybody have any questions or comments on this? No. You need a motion, Chris, I imagine. Yeah, this, since this is fee setting, you should do yeah. that with a vote. Anybody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to the select board approve the updated recycling center uh, fee schedule. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Okay. All okay. opposed? Four to one. If I could just pile one more note on that. Um, we have been talking with uh, our uh, staff up there as well as our insurance people uh, around how to, if we need to, um, adapt to the adoption of the Warren article about dumpster diving. Um, there really isn't a lot that we can do from a policy perspective that as, the, as the lawyer's opinion told you the the voters the town uh, controls that function under law so we can't really in interpreting the the will of the voters in the language of that warrant article there's not a lot of room for us to get in the way of of that not that we want to get in the way but we do want to do it as safely and uh, with you know so there's nothing that we can do to say you can't physically go in the dumpster yeah uh, I so we that, have to that is opening the town up to liability and, 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 and God forbid someone gets hurt yeah we've we've got to ask uh, just for some common sense I mean uh, you know the uh, can't we put a sign up there you know if somebody says they want to throw it away just leave it on the ground somebody pick it up rather than going in the dumpster uh, yeah it just turns into uh, what's worthy of sitting on the ledge and what goes in the dumpster and who manages that process and there's three guys up there already they can't even manage what the traffic flow meaning that comes in you can't it, it'd yeah. be the same problem we had with the with the swap shop right, right? with nobody saw available to monitor it right. you know people are leaving hazardous waste and all kinds of craziness in there so it's just that same problem so I think in the voter guide, Chris, um, refresh my memory. In the, in the voter guide, did we express our concern about that warrant article from a safety standpoint? Not after. No, you you suggested an amendment at the deliberative session, and I don't think the voter guide speaks to anything like that after deliberative session. I think we might have cleaned that up because there's. You could you can do that if you all want to do that, but it's uh, that would be a oh, departure. That was, th that was pre-deliberative session. That was the last time you may have 
discuss that. But you've, with the petition warrant articles in the voter, we've only done the voter guard once, but you have not wandered into steering in that content, you know what I mean? Yep. You're not, you've yep. not expressed opinion yep. uh, in the voter guide about uh, the outcome of petition warrant articles. You've okay. done that at deliberative session as a board, but you didn't do it in the okay. in the voter guide. Okay. So you it's in, you certainly can. It's your your product, but you, that's not something you've done before. Well, that guide's already been posted on the website, right? Yeah, but it's editable. I mean, it's, yeah. I'm just what I'm trying to understand is 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 there a way given this particular one and the the significant safety risk if this is something that the board should publish a statement on or make a statement about it and what would be the vehicle for doing that and, and not to mention like you know people that are going to take the you know the the, the materials that we get money for because that's going to hurt the recycling center right yeah I mean you, you'd have to fill up a lot of trucks to move the numbers uh, either either in reducing our our tipping fees by you know pulling things out of the dumpster or but that's yes it is a concern but it's not a huge it's dollar. not going to hurt us any more <laughs> than this but but I, I do think that the the safety issue is important yeah, the other the other thing that we've tried to think through is w what what's reasonable to ask our staff to do in terms of enforcing things. You know, it's um, it's got to be clear and it's got to be something that's perceived to be reasonable. Um, yeah, I'm just talking about voter education. Yeah, uh, I'm just talking about voter yep. education. So uh, again, I'm just trying to wrap my head safety here. So are we supposed to provide them a ladder to get in and out of the dumpster? No. No, we don't. I'm not going to encourage. Well, I mean, it. But just how far are we going to let this? I mean, because right now they'll be jumping in, and then if I mean, you jump in, you hit a sharp piece of metal, it goes right through your leg. You know. Yeah, those are those are possible. Those are possible outcomes, and we're not thrilled with them. But we don't. I mean, does a sign on the dumpsters, you know, saying hey, you enter the dumpster at your own risk, does that help us or? No. That's what I mean. If we're going to get somebody, we're, we're, we're supposed to be, you know, all about safety or whatever. Right. Somebody gets hit on the head. I mean, I don't know. I could just see that there's, there's a lot of Sue happy people around here too. That I, again, there shouldn't be anybody. If you're in the dumpsters while people are using the the, the dump itself, whatever. If there's a if give them a half hour or whatever to scammer through there, they shouldn't be in there while people are trying to do what they they want to get rid of their trash and leave. It's not a freaking carnival. It's not a circus. So, and if anybody takes medals or whatever. That's ours. I mean, it's it's ours to, to do what we want with it, not for somebody to come in and say, hey, I'm looking for all the copper that's in the dumpster. That's stealing. Stealing copper is a federal offense, too. So, I don't know. I got problems with it. So, Tyler, how far do you want to go with this? I want to go with leave it like it is. I mean, it's really, again, if there's furniture or somebody wants it or whatever, hey, have at it. Stay out of the dumpster. You shouldn't be in the dumpsters at all, I don't think. Somebody gets hurt, we're gonna. The town's gonna pay. I think the taxpayers should know that. The responsibility to come on the town, and we'll pay the penalty, whatever it is. Stay out of the dumpster. If there's furniture, dollhouses, I heard, or whatever, put them to the side. Let them take them, and so be it. So that's my point. I think to Tyler is that at face value, if you're going to vote for the first time on Tuesday, and you're reading that for the first time. You're going to interpret it as saying, yeah, that's a great idea. Why can't I take what I want from the recycling center, right? Somehow, I think the, the concerns that this board has need to be communicated as well so that people can see the other side of it. And I don't know if there's risk in us doing that as a board. No. But I don't know. What are you, what are you thinking? I really just hope people that, that do decide to take things out We'll do it in a responsible manner and not go in there and be, you know, cowboy and trying to get, you know, searching through and moving things around. If it's on top, they take it, fine. Usually they have the pole there that people used to grab and pull things out of. In all my years, I never saw anybody actually get inside a dumpster. But again, I'm not there all day long, so I can't say that has it ever happened. But I just hope that people, you would want to think that they have the right in the restraint to 
to make a good proper decision on how to retrieve something. Um, you know, we have somebody in it a couple weeks ago. We had somebody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we had somebody in it a couple weeks ago, in anticipation of the warrant article passing. <laughs> I, I, I don't think there's going to be a right way or a wrong way. I mean, the best we can do is put signs up for right now and probably just address it that way and just see see how it unfolds. I mean, we can play under the the presumption that something bad's going to happen, which there's not saying there isn't a chance of happening, but. Do we live on, I mean. Well, you know, we do, do we be, do we, so I'm not, I'm just. No, absolutely. Yeah. That's what we're here to talk do, about. Do we be reactive or proactive? Pro. Right? And that, all, all I'm saying is a statement that makes people consider the other side. I, I, I would hope. Like a postcard or something or a flyer. I mean, even something that gets posted on the internet right because town website yeah i mean we don't have yeah, time yeah. to do a flyer or anything like that right, right. but um, no, that's true yeah it's only a week away yeah uh, i'm with you john i hope that people would show restraint and reasonable um you know in in how they approach it but i also wonder if we have as a board have an obligation to raise what the impact could be on the town absolutely and I also just want to say, the people that we know that are going to be actually probably trying to go and get, we already get an idea of who they are. They're going to be the same people that are weekly doing it. Yep. You know, it's not going to be, and most of the people that want this to pass are want it because the fact that they do want to take some scrap wood out of there because they're building something at their house and that they need it for, you know, I mean, people brought up a bunch of different little situations that deliberation. Okay, so, so what I'm sensing here is that we should have something put together and put on the web, on the website. Yeah, we're putting FYI. Sure. All right. It. So we'll work on that and then uh, get it up in a couple of days. Uh, if you're all good with that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. So uh, we, we ran a little late here uh, for our 7 o'clock appointment. Mr. Gonzalez, feel free to come up to the table. Please introduce yourself and your address. Yes, Frank Gonzalez, 113 Tuscan Road. I've got four copies of a quick letter. Okay, start. start. Yeah. yeah, well, is it the same thing you sent me? It's the same one, yeah. Okay, because they have what you sent me already, but if you've got something new, yeah, then I give it to them. Older um, emails in here as well. Okay, yeah, you, uh, start, start over there, and I'll get the scraps when they're... Basically, what I'd like to do tonight is make a request. This is the backup documentation with a request in front. Okay, this is the same. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Eaton doesn't have one. Thank you. I've been in town 45 years and I don't know anybody. Okay. <laughs> Not this group. Um, All right. Do you have you, one for me? Huh? You don't have one for me? I had four. That's well, let me give you one of the base, base letters. And all the documentation I, I supported with the other ones. Oh, Donna. Thank you. Some photos. Um, like I said, I just want to make the recommendation tonight. Yep. But if uh, you could have a seat, and then you, again, state your name and address for the record, please. Okay. Frank Gonsalves, 113 Kelsey Road. Been in town 45 years now. Okay. And go ahead and present your. Okay. Essentially, we've got a situation with myself and my neighbor. We have wells that are 25 to 30 feet from the roadway. I've yep. been talking to DES over in Concord in detail, and the current recommendation is 75 feet from a property line or from a uh, contamination source. Road salt is definitely a contamination source. So I'm basically saying, can you folks get, uh, grandfather us in so we don't have a problem? I just had my well, you know, water chested. I'm under the limits on, on chloride, 230 and the limits, not 250. I'll be watching it because they've been dumping a lot of salt on that road. With a half-inch half snowstorm, they hit us eight times with salt. So I'm just asking that we make that a salt-free zone. Okay. 
And then if you'd like to discuss this in finer detail, I can definitely do that. I can talk to you, uh, have Steve. Well, I mean, we could take this uh, information, take it under advisement, and... Uh, in past, Johnny Fernald never saw the road. Okay. Um, the drivers knew they didn't, they didn't even put down road, road sand. Okay. Sand is fine, all the sand you want. But the salt is an is a environmental hazard. There used to be 20 uh, reservoirs that were in, in jeopardy in the state. Now there's 50 from road salt. Okay. So it's an issue that I'd like to have you folks take a look at and let us know. Okay. Well, I appreciate you presenting this. Like I said, we'll take it under advisement and then. Jane Stevens is in her 80s. Her husband's in the 90s, the next door neighbor. Their well is about 30 feet from the road as well. Okay. He's not going to be here tonight, but um, her husband's been in and out of the hospital quite a bit. Okay. So, I mean, Frank, you see you are a, a no salt zone, and, and where would the zone be? The, all of Kelsey West Lane. Kelsey West? Okay. Just West Lane now, isn't it? Yeah, it's his request. Yeah. No, no, I think the road is just West Lane now, isn't it? Oh, that's, no, yes, just the name of the road is West Lane. Yeah. It's off of okay. Kelsey. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, this has been going on for quite a while. I sent Chris a letter, but okay. a year, no, it was a year ago, February, an email. And that oh, email we've, yeah, we've, we've, gone, we've gone back, we've gone back a ways on this one. Yeah. yeah. Did we get any input from Sean? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, the, the same, same thing I wrote to, to Mr. Gonzalez, okay. it's, um, you know, we have an obligation to keep the road passable for everybody that travels on it. It's, it's, yes, it's a different kind of road in that it's short and it's a dead end, but it's a class five road. So, um, it's, it's, you, we want to apply the same. So they're using generally. strictly salt or is it a salt sand mix or? Uh, same thing that it doesn't get any different treatment than any other asphalt road, whatever it Kelsey gets. Uh, yeah. they, they've tripled the amount of salt on a half inch, you know, snowstorm, he's been by salting down, salting back eight times in a half inch. Kelsey Road gets it once. So I think that um, we need to address this. Because my well, I start right. hitting some bad Mr. numbers. Gonzalez, like I said, we'll take it under advisement and we'll discuss Benjamin, this. thank you very much. We'll discuss it you. and we'll be sure to get back to you. Okay. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. Also, just a couple of quick points. Um, several years ago when the school was being built, I had two tractor loads of uh, furniture delivered here. I think this uh, conference table is part of it. But the police department offloaded it for me, and I've been a contributor in town for a long time. My wife and I were in the uh, fire department okay. for eight years. Anyway, okay. gentlemen. Thank you, Frank. Ladies, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Conservation Commission. an awful lot of you guys this year. Thank you for scheduling us on a kind of a short notice there, but it came to our attention that there was a, uh, a, a couple of easements on, uh, on a particular property, on Johnson Angler's property on Case Road that didn't have management plans, uh, so you can't really do anything until the management plans are in place. <clears throat> I, I thought since there were two separate easements that it was going to require you know, two separate management plans, but apparently the person doing the management plans has decided to she can put it all on one management plan. So we're only going to ask for four thousand dollars rather than eight thousand dollars. <laughs> Leading with the good news. <laughs> anyway, my name is Sam Demarat. I chair the Conservation Commission, and I'll uh, open the public hearing to expend the four thousand dollars from the conservation fund for the management plans for uh, two 
easements on John Tenenko's property on Case Road. Uh, and I, I see we have a quorum here, and uh, uh, there's four members of the Conservation Commission here. There's Susan Mooney, Cheryl Smith, Deb Kimball, and then from our Trails Committee is uh, Celia Abrams, who has been pretty you know, a close neighbor to John for a number, of, a few years, and uh, has been pretty interested in, in his property as far as how things go in there. Uh, so, uh, anyway, th th that was the, you know, the gist of it, you know, we're looking for, to draw out $4,000 from the conservation fund for the management plan for these two uh, separate easements on one, uh, John Tonenko's property. So, I have a question, Sam. So, was it two years ago that we had a similar situation with the same property and we approved i think like two thousand dollars for the development of a stewardship plan no, that, that was the young william e kennard um that was the kennard. parcel okay so yes. different parcel okay and it's the same sort of thing a stewardship plan that got it um, exactly uh, details out what's allowed and what's not allowed okay that's all i wanted to make sure it was, was it the same property yeah. And when Selt and Bearpaw do most of their easements now, they incorporate a stewardship management plan fee into their easement. So during that process, so there was one just recently in the paper. Okay. Seasons that passed it. So it's, it doesn't typically come up as a separate ask. Now it doesn't. I now it doesn't, most right. Most of the time they're looking at these, but yep. because the fact that Trinanko was done so long ago. Yep. And then also the, the Kennard was something that was a town purchase, but we had to set up someone to monitor the easement. Yep. Um, you can't do it because it's owned by the town. Okay. It, it often accompanies the, um, the property deed when deeds are transferred, so the new owner will understand what is permitted and what is not permitted. Ah, okay. A relatively new thing. Is that correct? To the storage that the, um, well, the Trinenko easement, which the first one was back in 1993, and I think that was before we even had the conservation fund, perhaps. Yes, there was and, before that. And that, <coughs> and that easement was actually donated by the landowner, so it didn't cost the town anything to put it in conservation. But the more recent, the 15-acre parcel that's part of this request was completed in 2018 and it's very specific in the easement deed the requirement for the stewardship plan and what it what its goals are and what what it will contain so it not only looks at all the values of the natural resources on the, the site but it it guides the landowner and us as we're monitoring the easement how to manage it so that you best preserve those values. So that's something that's that's not included in the easement deed, the, the actual how to manage it so that you protect all of these values. And, and that's really the purpose of the management plan is to make sure yeah. that the, the value of that property and the value of the easement doesn't decrease by mismanagement or not following what was outlined in the easement in terms of how to, how to preserve features or habitat or, or vernal pools or whatever it might be as, as species of that are more valuable in terms of property. And so that somebody doesn't, you know, cut down a bunch of trees or um, dump a bunch of stuff on the property that would decrease the value of that. I happen to be the one, being John's neighbor, <coughs> who monitors those easement parcels for the Conservation Commission. Even though I'm not on the commission anymore, I still do the easement monitoring for them. And he always has questions to ask me about how should he deal with this situation when we have uh, 
a lot of invasive plants on one of the parcels, for instance. And because I'm a volunteer, I'm not a professional, I, I feel uncomfortable giving him advice that yep. is my best guess, but it's not professional advice. And the Conservation Commission has an obligation as the easement holder to maintain the values of the easement <coughs> and make sure that the, um, the conditions are being, <coughs> the easement conditions are being met. On behalf of the town? Yes. I, I would say I, I've been John's neighbor for 15 years and it's been his goal as long as I can remember to put all of this land in easement so that it would be protected from development and also so that it would be enjoyed by the residents of the town. He put walking trails on it and he's just in 2019 he completed easements on all 255 acres that he owns. So that's a, a great chunk of natural undeveloped land that the, the town will benefit from both for enjoyment and our water quality and air quality and the wildlife habitat that, that it can take. Doesn't part of this property protect an aquifer in that area yes, as well? Yes, several of the pieces he has in easement with NRCS, our wetlands reserve program easement, specifically to protect the water resource. Okay. Uh, this is not on all of those. These are on the two particular ones the yes. town has interest in. Yes. I think the, the Conservation Commission has already voted to uh, expend the funds from the uh, uh, Conservation Fund for the management plan. And, and knowing now that it, it's it's going to be one plan for the two properties. It's only four thousand rather than eight thousand, so there's a decent savings there. Uh, any other questions from the board of selectmen? That's fine. Uh, any, any? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll open it up to the public, and I don't see any public out there. Mr. Well, except for Gene, huh? Mr. Reed. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see it back there, Gene. <laughs> um, my personal opinion is go for it. Thank you. Okay. The proper use of the phone. So at this point, I guess I will close the public hearing on the uh, on the uh, expenditure of the four thousand dollars from the conservation fund for this for the management plan for these two particular. Uh, easements on John Tenenko's property and back to the Board of Selectmen. So what would happen if the board decided not to approve this? Well, then the, they don't get, don't get a plan <laughs> at this point, you know. I mean, you, the, the, the way that it's set up in this town, not, unlike some others, uh, you know, you have to have uh, permit, uh, votes from both the Conservation Commission and the Board of Selectmen in order to expend the funds. This is the generator plan. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I got my head reading wrapped around this uh, based on reading this. Um. And the, the plan should, if we go ahead with it, the plan should be done by the 1st of August, I believe. Anybody else have any questions or comments? We only do this plan once, right? Hmm? It's a one-time thing. Yeah, just just once for the plan. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Sue, so one of the what, one of the things you just said that I think uh, you know occurs to me as a really good point is that the plan goes with the land. It does. No matter and so who it doesn't yeah. result in. Yeah. Plan will be good. Yep. I, I I just want to correct that a little bit. I stewardship plan. It's intended to be refreshed every 10 years because conditions change and okay. best practices may change. Okay. So this is not an in perpetuity plan. Yeah. It's 
where we are today, yeah. given the current condition. Got it. Yep. Even still. Mm -hmm. And they per periodically update them, uh, you know, every five or ten years or something like that. Anyway, depending yep. on what the property looks like. Okay. So we want to make a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve the expenditure of four thousand dollars to assist in the development of a stewardship plan for uh, Map Nine, Lot Eleven, and a portion of Map. Nine lot ten from the conservation fund. Oh, the expenditure from the conservation fund. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, did any of you guys uh, do the? Any the, other uh, questions for me while walk? I'm while I'm the here? Or? Department did it. I don't have any of the board. No. Did you do the walk? Okay. No. Yes. Thank Chris you for coming. And Liam and I. Oh, thank you for How was it? Us. It was great. We had I don't know 16, 17 people. Nice. Yeah. Good job. Good. It was great. Awesome. There's an article in the forum. In the forum? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. It's too bad they didn't have the snow. That yeah. 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 Right. But we had signs instead right. of tracks. Yeah. It's not, it's not footprints. Yeah. No. It's too bad. We had some cool yeah, the balls on Saturday. Plenty of snow. Yes. Yes, we do. Why don't we start with Tyler? I did. I hand that down to Tyler. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, review action items for next meeting. Well, we don't have really nothing for next meeting, right? Uh, because next meeting you're going to be electing officers and we're going to yep. be doing so. official house business, which we usually don't have other discussions on that night, do we? Well, it depends on what's in the agenda. Okay, because I know the planning board went up, meaning they don't have anything mention else. another meeting. I don't think it's going to be necessary. But we'll, we'll we'll know non when we get done with non public if we All right. if we need to have one. I'm hoping you don't because I know you got a full day on Tuesday and yeah okay lives. And All right, so if we don't have any other, in, uh, any other Gene, do you have any? I'll be right back. Business? No, thank no? you. All right. So there'll be no other uh, business. We'll be then entering into non public under 91A. What was the uh, uh, I want a, a, a two, a three, Roman two, <laughs> sub A. RSA ninety one A three, Roman two. A colon three, Roman two. Roman two. Yeah. Can you tell me what the uh, subject is, please? Uh, 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 Pers personnel. A is A is personnel. Personnel. All right. And then when we complete it upon that, we'll be uh, exiting non-public and. Uh, adjourning the meeting and then seal the minutes. Waiting for Donna to get waiting for Donna. Yes. Okay. Oh, my voice holds up. So they say, but there's no complications. But you know how that goes. Oh, right. you got to sign this too. I'll make a motion the select board enter non public session per RSA 91 A colon 3 section 2A. A second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Roll call. I, Donna Danis. I, Tony Dumas. I, Ben Barlett. I, John Morn. Thank you, Gene. Have a good night. Bye, Bye Gene. Bye, Gene.